and gentlemen, this next stand-up comedian was a football player, and shouldn't be hard to tell. Get it for Jared Campbell! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Um, I used to play football for the University of Miami. Which is the closest to joining a gang. Thanks for joining the gang. Danger! Alright, because I'm from Denver, Colorado originally, alright? In Denver, Colorado, I'm the big black guy, alright? In Denver, Colorado, I'm Suge Knight. I got to the University of Miami locker room and said, I'm a little more Wayne Brady, alright? <laughs> These dudes are 17 with neck tattoos and five-year-old kids. It's not my type of gangster. Uh, I was good at college. I made it to the NFL. For like three weeks, don't clap, all right? They kept me so fast, man. And what says my mama, all right? So my brother's like, a, he's a famous pro bowler player. He made the, he was, my brother's Calais Campbell. And um, he makes the team. And uh, I didn't, my mama didn't know what the hell to do. She's like, well, look here, baby, what the hell is he doing to make a team that you're not doing? And I said, well, mama, he's six foot eight. The real question is, what you was doing when you was pregnant with him? You weren't doing it, pregnant with me. Yeah. Is this my real daddy? Is this my real daddy? <laughs> Turns out it is my real daddy. Um, <laughs> my mama and dad had eight kids together, eight kids. So that means my daddy had a horrible pullout game. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Eight black kids in Denver, Colorado. That's like 75% of the diversity right there. In fact, I didn't know the term my brother man black people until college. Somebody was like, what's up, my brother? I said, you too? Pops is tripping, yo. Now I'm diverse. Um, I, st I, gotta, I, I think all white people are ticklish. <laughs> Cause I'm nine for nine with tickling white people, yo. That's a hundred percent and nine people, that's ridiculous. It's way too high, right? And I get it, you guys are like, yeah, you a big black dude tickling white people, that's weird as hell. But at the same time, I'm trying to change stereotypes, all right? I'm tired of white people seeing black people like, oh snap, they gonna rob us. I wanna see white people see us and be like, oh shit, tuck me's coming to tickle us. Yeah, man, mess kids up, baby. Uh, I like, um, um, ever since this Trump election, I like eavesdropping on white people. <laughs> Figure out what's going on, man. Cause think about, I don't get, like, I don't get, when I go face to face, I don't get the same conversation. I'm just an athlete, I'm just a black athlete. Hey man, sports, cars, women, simple shit. But you have an eavesdrop on white people, they talk about real shit. <laughs> like stocks and bonds, <laughs> extraterrestrial life. <laughs> Global warming, all that real stuff. The other day I was at, I was at a car shop, an e-drop, right? And I heard this guy, he was like, all right, the key to financial success is all about bonds, all right? Get low interest, good bond. And then he saw me, I was like, what's up? He said, how about the LeBron James game, baby? I kept walking, he was like, all right, now what you want to do is make sure you get reciprocal value. Everything, right? And I heard him say, man, what y'all talking about? He said, uh, LeBron James. I said, nah, nah, before that, back that up. He said, yeah, juvenile, back that ass up, right? Never give me the good conversation. <laughs> but I think, you know, it would be beneficial. I think that would kind of ease racism a little bit. I think more white people should eavesdrop on black people and find out interesting yeah. things. Like, I was surprised. The other day I went to this hood party. I went to a party in Inglewood. It was the hoodest party I've been to in LA. And um, I heard like three gangster looking dudes arguing, having an elaborate argument about which restaurant has the best ranch. <laughs> and they were in the jelly was like, yo son, I'm telling you right now, Wingstop got the best ranch in the world, bruh. I go to Wendy's, get the five piece, then go pay 50 cents for Wingstop, get the ranch, cause it's the best. The next, <laughs> the next guy's like, yo blood, I'm telling you right now, bruh, Domino's be the pizza, get that ranch from Domino's. <laughs> It was like, he was like, yo, man, y'all gonna be mad, but like, Jack in the Box Red, Jack in the Box Red is fire. What? And then they shot that guy. He died there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so just, if you gonna argue about people in your ranch. Um, um, I also spent a lot of my spare time uh, reading Yelp reviews on strip clubs. <laughs> Cause you never see that, right? You, you, like, you see people who write your views, don't go to strip clubs, but you see it, it's like somebody really upset, right? 
So I'm just thinking like, yo, never get a lap dance from Tiffany and Jaguars. I paid a hundred dollars for three and a half songs. She barely took the top off, and she gave me zero physical contact. I would give it zero stars, but they got fire range, two stars. <laughs> y'all, that's my time, y'all. Jerry Campbell. Keep it going for the ranch master, Jerry Campbell, ladies and gentlemen.